out, connect into server. Excellent. So I'm going to share my screen mm. and we are going to get started. Okay, so can you see? I can. Awesomeness, right. So. Amazing. Cool. So we know where we're at now. So today we are going over. So hello again. Welcome again. This is a Keys House Artist Development Program. And today we're going to be going over recording tips. Sorry, finding your sound and recording tips. Mm -hmm. So I know you spent some time in the studio. So some of this will be uh, familiar to you. But for those who are not, it's for their benefit. So you're ready to start your musical journey now. Mm -hmm. In order to find your sound, you have to ask yourself some questions in order to help shape your sound. Mm -hmm. This applies whether you are an aspiring recording artist or a producer. Okay, so let's look at specifically to recording artists because my assumption is most of the people are going to be recording artists. Okay. So, what will you rap or sing about? Will it be reality, fiction, abstract, a mix? What type of artist do you want to be? Do you want to be a relatable artist? Do you want to be an educational artist? Do you want to provoke thought from your listeners? Do you want to be polarizing, speak about subjects that people have very strong for and against views? Or do you want to be a uniting artist who unites people's views? You don't have to be one of these things. You can be a combination, but the branding is about being very, very clear to what they call the end user, what you are and what you can do and what you're willing to provide versus what you're not. So if you do want to be very clear with what you do, this is some of the questions you need to ask yourself. So the most important question of all, which I'm going to ask you now, which you can answer, is why are you doing music? That's a big question. Big question. That's a big question, Kemal. Um, I'm doing music because music has been my escape my whole life. Music has been your escape? Yeah. So it's a form of, excuse me, I've got to switch on the light here. If that helps. Does it help? A little bit, not really. So it's, a form, it's a form of therapy for you is what you're saying. Yeah. Music, music's just always been a part of me. Like I, I can't imagine Aaliyah without music. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So, so it's something you're accustomed to? Here we go. Uh, it's just something I, I can't live without. Like it's, wow. it's something that makes me very happy and something that helps me get my feelings across or a Brilliant. message across. It's just... So it's, 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 it's really a personal thing for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, awesome. But that's an important question for all of you aspiring artists out there is, why are you doing music? And be very honest with yourself because if you're on a hype, if it's like, okay, cool. I can be famous, I can make some money. That's fine, just be honest with yourself and then go in that lane, you know? So, Definitely. right, uh, let's go through some of the reasons that people desire to do music. So some of them want to be famous, some want to be rich. Some have a burning passion for music and some have a personal mission to spread a message through their music. These are not the only reasons, but these are the main reasons I found, yeah? And so once you find your why, it will, guide, it will start to guide your sound and your brand automatically because you'll start, to write, you'll start to write songs in the vein of the reason as to why and whatever it, whatever it is you wish to express. Mm. With me so far? With you. All right. So what about the beats you're going to use? Now, here's where the producers come in. What kind of sounds do you like? Do you like synthetic sounds or those kind of sounds? Or do you like real instruments? Do yeah. you like both? Do you want to fit in with the latest sound trends? Or are you about trying to shape your own type of sound and develop a unique identity with your music? These are all the questions you should be asking yourself in your journey to becoming a recording artist or a producer. How do you fit in? Where do you fit in? Or do you not fit in? Are you actually building something brand new and unique for yourself? Which is going to be challenging because a lot has been done, but there's always somehow to take something and flip it yourself and make it quite unique. If you do decide which I'm gonna go with the assumption and from experience that most young people wanna go with the in sound at the moment, what's the hottest thing? You need to consider that everybody is trying to do that. And what I mean by saying that is that you're gonna have a lot more competition. 
a lot more competition. If you're trying to get a piece of this pie, what everybody's getting is a lot more competition. But why don't you build or develop or bake your own pie? All right, so um, recording tips. So it's so important, um, and I think this is really overlooked, that when you actually go into the recording studio to be able to communicate with the recording engineer, because essentially that engineer needs to understand what you need from him or her, mm -hmm. and you need to be able to get what you need from that session. So I like to use an analogy of you're in an aeroplane, you go into the studio, you're in an aeroplane, and the engineer is the pilot, and you are the satellite navigation. You're holding, if you're old school, a paper map, or if you're new school, you've got the maps, Google Maps on your phone, knowing, okay, fly there, fly there, fly there, so that you can arrive at your destination. And so that's the same with music, right? So what you should definitely do is you should be prepared to get the best out of your recording studio session. What you should do is call ahead. Hi, just checking we're still on for this time, just confirming. Um, I'm gonna require this, this, and this. You may be doing a live session and you may wanna record acoustic guitar simultaneously to your vocals. So you may say, okay. Um, I wanted to record a song that I've written just playing the guitar, but ideally if I can play the guitar whilst recording at the same time, I'd love to do that. Do yeah. you have the facilities to do that in advance? If the engineer or the studio does or doesn't, they can say, we can do that or we can't do that. What we can do potentially is we can record the guitar separately and the vocals separately to get a clean signal. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you can understand what you're going to do when you come in and you come prepared and practice, 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 practice. And when you finish practicing, practice some more, whatever song it is or songs you're going to go to the studio to work on. Make sure you have them down packed as close to committed to memory as possible. If you can get them committed to memory where you don't have to have it on your phone or if you're old school in a paper, that's better because you're gonna deliver it better. Does that make sense? Because now you're not concentrating on what's the next word or anything. You're just concentrating on conveying the emotion in your delivery of that particular performance, yeah? So these are all the things you should do before getting to the studio. Now, once you arrive at the studio, you need to actually be able to communicate. And so with everything, you have language, don't you? You have terms. And so here are some of the key terms to be able to communicate with the engineer in the studio. You're going to know most of this, but it's surprising how many young people over the years don't know how to communicate to an engineer and they're trying to, and they're getting frustrated. And sometimes the engineer's getting frustrated because they can't get what they want. Mm -hmm. So the lead, these are terms you're going to hear, the lead, vocal the lead vocal is what it just says on the can it's the lead it's the main vocal it's the loudest vocal so if you're doing a chorus chorus means more than one voice the lead vocal will be the main vocal that goes through the middle it comes out of both speakers simultaneously and then what you should be doing on top of that is you should at least record another two channels and one of those channels will be panned hard left and the other channel will be panned hard right. And then you'll have the lead vocal coming through the middle. Does that make sense? Yeah. So your lead vocal has to be your best and strongest performance because it's the lead, it's out in front, right? Same situation with verses. Depending on how you record your verses, you'll have your lead verse. And then you'll have where we're going to get to now is your BVs, okay? Mm -hmm. So your BVs are short for backing vocals. They're also known as stabs. Reason they're known as stabs is because you're adding harmony essentially or backing up certain particular words. So you're not gonna double the whole entire verse. You're just gonna emphasize certain words or certain, harmonize certain words. And so that motion is like, okay, stabbing there, stabbing there, stabbing there. So stabbing is not, it's not the formal term, but I've heard a lot of young people use, oh, can I stab that now? Um, and we're talking about in a studio context because I know stabbing the young people doesn't, in a sentence together, doesn't sound good because of what the media has said. Mm -hmm. So the correct technical term for that is backing vocals, or most people will call them BVs. So you have your lead at the top. That's the most strongest one. We're going to talk about verse. Then you have your backing vocals. You have a double. Now, some people 
double their vocals. I don't personally believe in it as a recording engineer. I think the only vocals that should be doubled should be the chorus at least doubled or tripled or quadrupled because the chorus is more than one voice. I think it's important to have a differentiation when you're listening to when you're hearing your inner verse and then all of a sudden the world opens up as you hear a chorus because there's this things are pan there and there and it sounds like there's a whole team singing the entire thing. Yeah, so the double is a controversial thing because I've, I've, I've worked with young people who are insistent on doubling their verse and I'm saying, why do you want to double your verse? And they don't really have a valid reason as to why they want to do that. Okay, so tracking really is just another word for recording. So people say, oh, I'm ready to track my vocals. I'm ready to record my vocals as in track, 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 track. Yeah. Okay. Delay or echo? Echo, echo, echo. Okay. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Delay or echo is the same thing. And it's when the vocal or instrument or whatever it is, is repeated after itself, after itself, after itself, after itself. And when it's repeated, now, um, it, you can set it to the timing how you want it and how long you want it to last. So that's what the engineer will do. Um, bear in mind, if you want things uh, echoed or delayed, you need to have a space behind the vocal you want. Because if you don't, then what will happen is the word you want to be echoed will bleed into the next vocal. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? So you have to bear that in mind. Also, with all of these different things, and there are many, many more we're not going to talk about today, but with all of these different things, it's about not overusing these things when you get in the studio, not using it as a crutch. So you want to really maybe speak, if the engineer's um, experience, speak to them and say, what do you think we can do to brighten this vocal up or to make it, give it a bit more, as we say, Hollywood? And they must say, okay, I, I, maybe I can put a little bit of delay there or I can add a reverb or whatever it is. That brings me nicely on to the word reverb. All a reverb is, is um, it replicates the space that the, record, that the vocals are recorded in, yeah? So the sonic quality of the vocals. So for example, um, a lot of people in home studios put their microphone in the bathroom and record yeah. it in the bathroom because the ambience of the bathroom gives the vocals a certain quality, yeah? So you can have um, small room reverb, you can have large room reverb, you can have drum reverbs, you can have church hall reverbs, they call, they've got plate reverbs, bathroom. There's so many different types of reverbs. So once you kind of got into the recording space and you want to start really figuring out what you can do to get your sound, you can sit down with an engineer and you can actually say, okay, can we go through a few reverbs to see which one I like and what best suits the sonic quality of this song. You're with me so far, Leah. Yes. I've not lost you. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Because my camera's here, but I'm looking at what, you, what you've written. No, 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 that's fine. I just want to make sure, because I'm going off. I just want to make sure that you're, you're understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Right, lastly, um, this is going to be a lot of people, especially when they start, is going to need to do this. It's called punch or drop in, okay? Now, this is when you record a section in parts. So for those of you that either have a very complicated, let's say, verse, where the syllables and the space you've left in there is not enough for you to breathe, to be able to deliver everything and announce it or pronounce every single word, you may need to do something called a drop in or a punch in. And so then what you could do is you could, cause you're supposed to practice. When you're practicing before you arrive, you realize I'm not gonna be able to do this in what they call one take. So one take is when you say, I'll do my entire verse, from beginning to the end without stopping and recording. Like I can do it in one take. Now, if you can't do that, you need to know before you arrive at the studio, when you're gonna stop and start and what parts of it. Reason being is it makes the whole process a lot quicker and more efficient. So there's so much work you can do outside of the studio to prepare for when you arrive in the studio and make it be a much easier, enjoy, enjoyful, it's not an enjoyable um, scenario and so that you and the pilot arrive where you want to arrive, safe and sound. Yes. All right. Okay. So I did say earlier that en an engineer essentially is just a person that is able, in this context, able to manipulate the sound. Yeah. So your vocals come out of your mouth, they go into the microphone, they have to get from the microphone 
into the computer and out of the speakers. The engineer, that's the job of the engineer. They do that. They've got to make sure that they give you a version at the end you can take away and listen to, which is not going to be properly mixed if they do it on the spot, but something you can listen to. So you have different types of engineers. It's, it's, it's important to get to know your engineer, just like you know your, 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 um, your local GP. Get to know what type of engineer they are. There are some engineers that want to be involved in the creative process of the recording, okay? Now, remember we spoke about different roles and you've got the producer and you've got the songwriter and the recording artist. Now, back in the day, the producer would be the person who sits with the engineer and the producer would be the person that's creatively guiding the recording from the artist. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now a lot that the producer is changed. The producer is now the beat maker. So that producer who would be actually saying, okay, not record that again. You need to put a bit more feeling in there. Try and say it in that manner. That person now, that job is becoming more and more obsolete. So a lot of the time the engineer is participating in the creative process. And what I mean is the engineer may say, okay, cool. No, do that again. You can do better. Let's make, so instead of them just pressing the button and you guiding them, they're being part of that process. It is up to you as an aspiring recording artist to decide whether or not you want that recording engineer to participate in the creative process. They don't have to. I don't know what kind of deal you have with them. They don't have to. You can say, look, I really appreciate your help, but I know what I'm going for. So I could just, you know, thanks for no thanks. Or they might be really suggesting some good things to you. Now, the thing with, the thing with music is very subjective. And that's why it becomes tricky because what you may think sounds good or what the engineer may think sounds good, you may not think sound good. And so you have to figure out a way how to come to some kind of agreement or agree to disagree whilst you're recording because you don't want it to take up your time. Yeah, think about making the best use of your time whilst you're in the recording studio, yeah? Now, I, I can't stress enough, enough yet. If you have a vision and you're clear on your vision, don't be afraid to stick to that vision whilst you're in the, whilst you're in the studio with the engineer. But just remember to be polite. That's a person. And remember, <laughs> you are the navigation. They yeah. are the pilot. So you don't want the rocket to crash. Yeah. Yeah? All right. Now, I've experienced this. Most people who spent many, many years in the studio have experienced this. There's always, and it's not just about recording, you always have off days. I've gone into the studio sometimes and I just can't perform to the level I want to perform. And I've tried and I've tried and it's so frustrating and it happens. This it happens to all of us. Yeah. So just don't let that discourage you. If that scenario happens, you're in the studio and you had all these plans to do this song, record this song and get it out by a certain time and it's not coming out how you want it to come out. Try to make use of your time in the studio doing what you can do. Maybe not recording vocals. Maybe go and get some tech, like, let's go and hear what my voice sounds like on this reverb, or let's see if we can play around with the music, yeah? yeah? Okay. Number one thing I would advise aspiring recording artists to do, and producers, is do not forget to have fun. Most people in music are doing it because they enjoy it. They enjoy the process, they enjoy the outcome, and you must always remember to have fun. So if you are well prepared, not just in music, but in life, it's going to be easier to have fun because you will get closer to the outcomes that you wish to get. All right. So today was a real short one. Thank you so much, Leah. Um, I'm going to ask you a real quick, a couple of questions, but before I ask you a couple of questions about what we've gone through, do you have any questions? No. All right, cool. I know that you've been in the studio before, so I know that you understand a lot of this. Can you tell me, um, can you tell me a couple of the common terminologies used in the studio, please, and what they mean? Lead, backing vocals, tracking, reverb, echoes, like doubles, like doubling the vocals and the chorus and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I think I'm missing some. How many did I just say? I know I'm missing some. Okay, so what does, uh, what's the name given to when you want to add harmonies to your lead? 
Backing vocals. Excellent. Do you know what? I just realised there's something really important that I've left out on there. So it's not written, but I'm going to explain it to you. Ad-libs. Okay. Ad-libs. So people confuse ad-libs with backing vocals. Yeah. So backing vocals are... Okay, in terms of volume, you have lead. Lead should be the loudest. Then you have backing vocals. They should be quieter than the lead. Then you have ad-libs, which should be quieter than everything. Ad-libs are when you be like, on the, on the, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, mm, uh, yeah. Those are ad-libs. Yeah. And then backing vocals is like, you've got your lead, and then whatever your lead is, you're like, la, 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 la. You're adding a harmony to it, or you're emphasizing a certain word if you're a rapper. So ad-libs is a very important one as well. That's A-D-L-I-B-S. Yeah, ad-libs, right? Backing vocals, lead. Chorus, double, tracking, um, delay or echo. Yeah. Reverb. What's the difference between a echo and a reverb? An echo is like echo. That's right. <laughs> and the reverb is um, when they're trying to make it sound a certain way. Like you said, some people record in their bathroom to have a different kind of sound. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So, so reverb is basically like the... The ambience of the room in which the the, the ambience of the room in which the vocals or the sound is recorded, that's the reverb. Yeah. Um, which is determined by the amount of hard surfaces, the size, the shape. So many things um, are gonna change the reverb. So for example, I'm in a room now and the window's open. So there's there's noises coming from from the window. Um, I have some, I'm, I've got my little studio set, so I've got some sponge there, I've got carpet. This all changes the reverb. If I was to close that window and I was to take my carpet and take the sponge off, the, the quality of my voice would be slightly different because it would be a little bit different environment because all that carpet and sponge fabric, they absorb sound. Hard surfaces and walls bounce the sound back, yeah? So these all affect reverb, but your engineer should know all of this, all right? Cool. All right. And what else did we go over? Let's real quick. So, so in terms of asking yourself important questions, can you remember any of the important questions you should be asking yourself in terms of finding your sound? Oh my God. Was one of them uh, making sure that like you practice and stuff, like make sure you've really gone through that. Well, that's, that's definitely something you should be doing as a process, but when yeah. you're trying to discover, you're just new and you're trying to discover uh, right, like, who am I musically, what's my identity? What are some of the questions you should ask yourself? Like, what instruments are you trying to do when writing your music and stuff like that? What kind of, what are you going to write about? What are your lyrics going to be about? What's the kind of, like, vibe you're going for? What kind of, like... Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. And the most important question? <laughs> oh, my God. Why are you doing music? Why are you doing music? The yeah. most important, why are you doing, why are you spending, we well, all have 24 hours a day. Why are you spending this amount of time out of your day doing music? What do you want to have? What's the outcome or what does it do for you? That is the most important question. Yeah. Amazing. So listen, thank you ever so much. You have any questions before we, so I know you're going to shoot off. No, I think I'm good. No, excellent. All right. Thank you so much. Have yourself a great day and we will speak next week. You too, Kev. I'll see you later. Bye. 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 Stop moving.